seconds, you learned all about the work that goes on in physics, that work is a change in energy. Work is done when a force displaces or moves an object. Consider this. Sometimes how long it takes to do work is just as important as how much work you do. For example, it might take this car eight seconds to accelerate from zero to 60 miles an hour, while another car covers the same ground in just four seconds. We would probably agree that the second car's engine is more powerful or is using more power. This comes close to the definition of power in physics, how much work is done in a given amount of time. Remember, work is measured in joules and time is measured in seconds. We have another unit to introduce you to, a derived unit for power. Can you guess what? It's not what, but watt, written with a big W. Watt is the unit for power. An older style incandescent light bulb like this uses about 60 watts of power, or 60 joules of energy per second. To get the same brightness, this compact fluorescent light bulb, or CFL bulb, uses 15 watts, or 15 joules of energy per second. This light emitting diode light bulb, or LED bulb, also has the same brightness and only uses 12 watts, or 12 joules of energy per second. Also, we can turn our own power into electrical power using this hand crank we can produce between 4 watts and 8 watts or 4 to 8 joules of energy per second. Using this hand crank we can turn our own mechanical power into electrical power. Power is all around us as humans. We burn watts or joules per second just being alive. These speeding cars on the track are burning watts too. How much depends on a variety of conditions. It's velocity, road conditions, weather conditions, whether it's going up or downhill, things like that. When we talk about motorized engines, in America, we use the term horsepower instead of watts. One horsepower is 745.7 watts. Now that you know that power is work divided by time, we can combine these concepts to other formulas you know to figure out a few things. When you combine the equation for work and the equation for power, you can see that power equals force times displacement divided by time. Do you remember what displacement divided by time equals? Velocity. So now we have another equation to figure out power. Power is equal to force times velocity. Looking at these relationships shows me ways to increase power. We can get more power when you increase the force exerted by an object. Increasing my velocity also increases my power. Here's a challenge for you. See if you can solve it using the information you just learned. A 1,000.0 kilogram car accelerates from zero to 27.0 meters per second in 5.00 seconds. How much power is the car using to do that? What we know is the mass, the final velocity, the initial velocity, and time. We're trying to figure out the power the car is using. As we said earlier, power is related to force. What equation do we know that can help us find the force? That's right, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we still need to figure out the acceleration based on what we were given. We now have an equation that uses the final and initial velocities along with time to find acceleration. Final velocity equals the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. 27 meters per second equals zero meters per second plus acceleration times five seconds. When we rearrange the equation, we find that our acceleration is 5.4 meters per second squared. We can now use that number to find the force exerted using the equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. Force equals our mass, 1,000.0 kilograms, times 5.4 meters per second squared, which gives us 5,400 newtons. We can now use this value for force to find our power. What was that equation again that relates power to force? Power equals force times velocity. The force 5400 newtons times our final velocity, 27 meters per second, to give us the power of 145,800 watts, or 195.5 horsepower. Remember, 
Power is the amount of work you can do in a given amount of time. It's also the rate energy is used, transferred, or transformed. That's all for this segment of Physics in Motion. We'll see you next time. For more practice problems, lab activities, and note-taking guides, check out the Physics in Motion Toolkit.